This patient has a large cavitary defect of the distal femur due to a prior infected arthroplasty which was removed. The uh, uh, existing defect is sized with trial components provisionally and a decision is then made on the reconstructive strategy. A choice must be made between available cones when additional fixation is re required. This shows the trial for a diaphyseal cone uh, available more recently for use with smaller defects. This provides added fixation but no rotational control for the femoral component as shown here. When the distal femur is deficient and does not provide rotational stability, the large uh, full cones can be used which then engage with the femoral component and augments stabilizing the implant. A burr is used to fashion the distal portion of the femur to accept the large cone which must be invaginated into the large cavity already present in the distal femur. An iterative process is used with burrs and reamers to smooth the bone to the shape of the cone which will be inserted inside the bone. Effort is made to minimize the amount of bone that's removed from patients who are already bone deficient. So these cones are used in cases like this where the existing defect is already fairly large and nearly the size of the proposed cone. This shows the trial cone being inserted. It's still somewhat prominent. The defect does not accept the cone far enough proximal and so additional work is required. The burr is then used to further fashion the bone along the lateral and posterior aspects of the bone to allow placement of the femoral cone into a somewhat deeper position. Here on the medial side, additional work with the cone to remove minimal amounts of bone while still maintaining the relative shape desired to match the cone contour. It's necessary to work back and forth with the trial and the burr in order to remove small amounts of bone gradually to achieve a satisfactory fit. As uh, the cone is inserted further and further into the host bone, a decision then must be made on placement of the femoral trial uh, and the desired level of uh, establishing uh, the new joint line. Additional work is being done here with the uh, burr to allow uh, a further proximal placement of the large cone with irrigation of the uh, uh, bone as the uh, burring steps are accomplished. After uh, repeated uh, efforts with the burr, uh, satisfactory uh, level uh, of uh, insertion of the cone is achieved. The trial uh, is placed and can be used as the final impactor for seating of the uh, cone and ultimately the real uh, porous tantalum uh, cone implant. This just shows final placement at the proposed level and a check now of rotational stability which is excellent as well as axial support having been established by the trial cone. A plug is placed into the canal prior to placing the real porous tantalum cone. The mark on the inserter controls the depth of the plug placement. The real cone um, is identical in shape to the trial but has a rougher surface and will engage uh, a little bit sooner and requires uh, impaction to the final uh, level desired. Um, we typically will use the actual trial component as the final impactor. This ensures proper position of the femoral component itself and uh, satisfactory cone placement uh, without uh, encroachment against the real component when it is cemented in place. This shows the final construct and then cementing proceeds uh, following this of the real component.